Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest aliens and UFOs video. Let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one though, I actually picked just randomly from the ufocasebook.com website. I love that website. I love looking at it every now and then just to see some fascinating info with so many entries out there. So this one, I just literally had the page moved up and down and whatever my mouse actually clicked on, then that was what I was going to talk about here. This one is going to be a little short in terms of an entry, and there's a potential twist to it. I mean, by now, everyone says that there's a definitive uh, ending or a resolution to it, but I kind of want to add just a different angle, just wanted to play devil's advocate towards the end and see what you think. But it has to do with this. This is one of the earliest known reported incidences involving UFOs and it's called the Maury Island incident. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this very unique circumstance. So what was the Maury Island incident? Well this was something that occurred back on June 21st 1947. This was actually around the same time period as the Roswell incident as well. So that's why again this is considered one of the most earliest reported sightings out there. Of course, there have been plenty more before that time period, but when I say reported, I mean along the lines of newspapers and others, uh, publications talking about this story. So here's what occurred. You have to go to a place called Maury Island, uh, which is in Washington, and it's a location also called, I think it's Pudget, Pudget Sound, if I'm not mistaken. So if you go there, during that time period, there was a man and then his assistant who claimed to essentially see a large number of UFOs together. Uh, the man was named Fred Chrisman, and the assistant was Harold Dahl. Both of them were there as harbor patrolmen, although some of this is actually disputed later on too. So they were there as patrolmen doing on a work on a work boat, and then it was just a random day. And this happened to be during the daytime as well. A lot of these times, these incidences seem to occur at night where there's not too much visibility. No, in this case, it was clearly in the day. So as they were working, they suddenly said they looked upward and they saw what they described as six donut-shaped objects right there in the sky, right above them, in fact. The way it was described, was it was nearby, it was close, and it was right above their location. And then a very curious thing happened afterward. Once they saw these things, there was something that opened up or maybe something that was just released. Whatever was the case, there was this substance that could only be described as, for lack of a better term, lava or some kind of white metal that began raining down on them. Began raining down on their ship and then on also on their boat, I'm sorry, and then also on the surrounding water. This stuff was also not light in terms of weight. Uh, the way it dropped down, it actually ended impacting some things on their boat. It broke, apparently, one of the workers' arms, and then unfortunately, it ended up killing the one of the uh, dog that was out there on the boat too. So either way, though, of course, no, no doubt everyone there was dodging for cover as to what was happening. And then that was it. Either the UFOs just skyrocketed upward or they slowly went into another direction. But whatever they did in terms of this quote unquote dumping, that was what their action was. And then they were gone. And so lo and behold, these guys, uh, they decided to look at the materials and to keep them as well. Well, they had them in their possession. They decided to hold on to them and then be able to, um, I guess, either try to showcase to others or keep it for themselves. Who knows? But here's where things take yet another twist. And in this case, no sooner did they start to hold the objects that they were approached by someone else. And if you're looking at this picture now, you'll see very that it's a very familiar picture in terms of UFO incidences. It's a men in black or a man in black in this case that would that approached them. It was a man that was described in a dark suit and the way they told the 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 way the man told those two men was he told them basically not to talk about anything. Uh in fact it was kinda like it was pretty much like a bad situation. Like this was something where it was an ominous quote. Uh, he stated 
I know a great deal more about this experience of yours that you will want to believe. And then he left it as that. So clearly, these two guys saw that there was some kind of threat uh, that was veiled upon them. And so they decided, I don't know at that point, to, to, to keep things quiet or if they decided to move forward with trying to get interest with this. Either way, though, eventually this information was passed down over to a man by the name of Ray Palmer, who ended up making a magazine called Amazing Stories. And in fact, I believe he created the first issue involving the circumstances surrounding this Maury Island incident. So he published it there. There was a guy by the name of Kenneth Arnold that ended up investigating and then also interviewing those two men. And then that's how this information was able to come out and 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 um, and be known to so many other people. Eventually, though, the guy that interviewed them, Kenneth Arnold, decided this material, let's see if we can get it inspected. And so he in turn contacted an army Air Force uh, officer, a guy by the name of Lieutenant Frank Brown, and he flew in from an area called Hamilton Field, and then he brought along another officer, and they were able to inspect this mysterious material. Remember, this is the material that ended up crashing down and uh, causing a lot of impact and then killing, unfortunately, that dog. Right away, though, the officers stated, not out loud, but probably to themselves, they stated and concluded that these metal objects were not from out of this world. They were actually aluminum, regular aluminum, the regular metal, essentially. And so it was not something that stood out. It was not something that was extraterrestrial. It was just in their circumstance, they thought that there was fake, that this was something that these two men were uh, were uh, creating just out of some other nefarious circumstance. But either way, though, they decided not to tell the interviewer, this guy Arnold, or Mr. Arnold, about what occurred because they didn't want to embarrass him. If you wanted to hear the story take yet another twist, though, Check this out. No sooner did those two officers go back or, you know, leave to go back to their uh, Air Force uh, location than they died in a crash. The car that they were in, I don't know if it spiraled out of control or if they were hit by another car. But either way, as they were on their way back, uh, they ended up crashing and then they both ended up dying right there as well. So quite a different twist, don't you think, when it comes to that scenario. Uh, eventually, the FBI investigated this stuff, and then that's where things take yet another twist. This is almost like uh, uh, one of those movies that just has endless surprises for you. It turns out that these two guys, the ones that uh, saw all this incident, Fred Chrisman and Harold Dahl, they were interviewed by the FBI, and the FBI concluded that everything that was just mentioned, everything that I literally just said these past few minutes, all of it was a hoax. Everything involving the man in black, everything involving the falling metal, everything involving the uh, officers, the ones that ended up dying, all that stuff was just a hoax. And this was why. They stated that when these two men were questioned, they realized that they were not going to provide further information because they were going to say that it was a hoax. So there wasn't really much else to go on. On top of that, they concocted or the this stuff because they wanted to share this information to local newspapers and other outlets, other journalism outlets out there. And then that way, in the hope that if they have so many publications talking about this, maybe they could have some kind of deal made for something else in the future. In fact, the way the quote is, in the hope of building up their story to publicity to a point where they could make a profitable deal with Fantasy Magazine. I don't know what Fantasy Magazine is, but whatever it was, it seems like it was going to be something that would be um, uh, uh, like, let's say, a profitable standpoint. So that's what the FBI concluded. So that basically that's the twist. That's everything that I was just mentioning at the beginning as far as things taking a, an ultimate turn. That's the resolution that it's been since then, um, ever since that time period. And in fact, the two men themselves continued to stay um, later on, pretty much, I think the guy as well, uh, Mr. Uh, Fred Chrisman, uh, he's no longer alive. He passed away, uh, you know, decades back, but still he ended up stating or changing circumstances that, that, that whatever was raining down was actually not a UFO. And instead it was just a regular plane 
dumping radioactive material. So that was his change associated with what occurred. So quite a difference no, when it comes to that as far as all of a sudden being a UFO dumping this weird material from another world and now just being a regular plane dumping of all things radioactive material so what do you guys think it's time to play a little devil's advocate on this because i'm just throwing this out there but what if the idea is that these two men maybe were saying that it was all a hoax all fake all those on those lines because they saw that they were in over their heads they didn't want to have all this stuff happening to them the way they were getting interviewed by the fbi the way they got the uh the the encounter with the man in black who knows what else was going on as well i'm just throwing that out there just to play that angle just to play devil's advocate angle and then that's why they suddenly changed their tune so what do you guys think about that as well as far as that angle so there's one area the more common one which is the idea that this was all 100 percent hoax and it was ultimately revealed as such and that's the way it is and then i'm just throwing this other suggestion out there too but that's pretty much it that's all the info associated with the Maury Island incident. Who knows if you go there to this day and if the story ended up being real, if you go there to Maury Island, you might be able to see or maybe catch some of the other remaining objects, whatever those things were that fell from the sky. Maybe they're still out there in the water, buried deep, or maybe some of it has gone onto shore. Who knows? Maybe you might be a lucky one if it turns out any of this is true. That, of course, is still up to debate so whatever ideas you have please post those comments below anybody from that area as well anybody have gone to go gone by maury island and have been able to see the location where supposedly all this happened if so please share your experiences as well all right everybody thanks again as always take care bye